In a bid to see just how great the great British holiday really was, 50 modern holidaymakers are spending two weeks in an authentic 1960s holiday camp. Overseeing the fun is a dedicated team of pink coats, including Colleen, Buster, Alex and Leanne, Ruth, Tony, Simon and Kerry. Have we got everybody? Yeah, come on, folks. Yeah, just... you ready? Their first task Three, is to introduce four, the campers to their accommodation, two, the humble chalet. Three, open the door. Have a look. What's a lovely room you have? Isn't it good? 28, is that, is that is special to you? Number, yeah? Is it really? Yes, yeah. You're in your lucky number. All right, Lily. Thank you. Let's begin. Who wants what bed? Oh, look you want to choose? Unlike today's resorts, most chalets don't even have a bathroom. The, the shower is only open from 7.30 till 8 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Where's the shower? Go and have a look. It's going to come into here. This is going to be your chalet. Maybe, maybe not. Those lucky enough to have a bathroom aren't much better off. Yes. So I have to come through this lady's room to come to the shares? Yes. It's not the best idea in the world, I can tell you. There's no TV, no view and no room service. For the next 12 days, it's home. From what I've seen so far, I think it's crap. We're used to staying in hotels um, and this isn't a hotel. Hopefully we won't be spending too much time in here though. No. We'll be out <laughs> by the pool all the time. I know there's not a TV or a radio. No, uh, no music when we're getting ready. I know. Only 62-year-old Chubby Oates isn't complaining. Oh, it's good. It's pretty authentic. Looking good. I mean, you can see. Well, there's luxury here. Not even a table and a chair. <laughs> but that's just right. That's how it was. The chalets were very rough around the edges. They were like prisons. The actual places that you used to live in were like prisons. You walked in and it was just a bunk, you know, one on the ground floor and a bunk above it. That was it. You could hear people next door, underneath you, above you. I didn't like it at all. I found it very uh, claustrophobic. How a family of four actually managed for a week. But you don't notice when you're a kid. You just don't notice those things. So you didn't worry about where you were sleeping or what the accommodation was like because it was fun, fun, fun all the way. Have you seen the rules? The rules on the wall. Believe me, you're not going to be happy. Modern holidays are about letting it all hang out. But at the Sunshine Camp, you're expected to keep it all tucked in. 60s campers were used to rules, but for our modern campers, it's a culture shock. Observe bedtimes. Ages 6 to 14, 9 o'clock, and all others 10.45. You're just going out at that time. Yeah, uh -huh. that's, that's when you get ready and you go to uh -huh. club at 10.45 when you're on holiday. Absolutely. Chalets should be vacated throughout the day, yeah. except immediately before and after swimming activities. Yeah, Does that mean we guys. can't stay in the chalet all day? Yeah, yeah that's... The bars open half five till half ten. That's what I wish gets steaming <laughs> half five. But what if you want to go out? Do not blaspheme, <laughs> swear, or use offensive language. It's bloody ridiculous, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> single gentleman should on no account enter the single lady <laughs> shopping <laughs> for any time of day or night. The campers can see the funny side, for now. <laughs> Do not engage in any public displays of affection deemed offensive. No oh. tongues. <laughs> <laughs> But one young camper seems to have forgotten the rules already. Oh no, you're not allowed to be in our chalet, get out! Sorry. <laughs> oh no! Have you read the rules? <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Didn't take very long, did it? Sorry, what's your name, sir? Johnny. Johnny McPhee. Hello, Mr. McPhee. How are Is you? that a young lady's? Room. Yeah, I didn't realise. I walked in by accident. Have you read the rules? I just have, yes. Oh, right. And what do the rules say? Don't go in another lady's room. And what have you right. just done? Just done it. That was an accident, really. I just wandered in and then they went, have you read the rules? Like that? <laughs> Sorry. Well, for us all to be happy and to behave like a gentleman, please don't go in her room. Yeah, OK. okay. Sorry. I'll... Yeah, all right, Sam. Right, OK. Well and truly covered off. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> 
Look at the size of them. <laughs> They're, They're actually, huge, how are they going to fit you? They're actually huge, I won't wear them. Before the family fun can begin, there's one last thing to take care of. Making our campers look the part. Oh. oh my god. Gone are thongs, baseball caps and ripped jeans. That's gonna make your ass look huge. Instead, dresses, vests, and interesting swimwear take their place. <laughs> Oh my god. That is not good. The clothes are hideous. <laughs> so are the shoes. Yeah. And the swimming the shoes costume. Are no. But hey, we're not going to look the worst, are we? And finally, everyone gets a 60s hairdo. <laughs> but there is one person who isn't playing ball. Pampered traveller Richard Goddard is used to getting his own way on holiday. He is now refusing to get his hair cut by the barber. Are you OK going with the ladies every morning to have your hair cut and blow-dried and uh, drinking tea and eating Madeira cake and being a little girl? Are you happy with that? Your mum take you to the hairdresser with the ladies every morning? Yeah. Cool. All right, that's great. Brilliant. Talk to him like that. He's talking to him like he's, you know... Oh, he's going to be gay if he goes to the hairdresser, so what? Just because he looks like Jim Rockford. <laughs> Hi, my name is Eddie. This is my family. Normally we go on cruise holidays, so God knows what we let ourselves in for. We've been around the Caribbean, we've been to Brazil, Italy, Spain, France, the Canaries. We've probably been more places than most adults. You don't lift a finger and it totally really relaxing. is totally relaxing. relaxing. You'll either love it or you'll hate it. If you can't find something to do on a cruise or something that you like, then there's got to be something wrong with you. I think it will be a lot harder than a modern holiday because you do have to join in. You have to join in. You yeah. can't just go and lay on a sunbed for two hours and say, oh, I've had enough of this and put me Walkman on. Couldn't believe what my mum had actually got us into. You know, they're going to have to do things that they don't want to do. They might have to eat stuff they don't want to do, but they're going to have to learn to compromise. Yes. But it's going to take some looking up. Sorry, mate. Hold your head still. No, he can't. I've got, a, got, a, got, a, got a knot in it. got knots in it. Instead of a short back and sides, a compromise is reached. It's a 60s duck's arse for Richard. That's looking very good. Yeah. Richard, we're getting there, mate. Our first impressions were, oh, my God. My beds are actually filthy underneath. Um, the beds have collapsed. It's dirty. They haven't been cleaned. Um, it's... It's very, very basic. It's absolutely unacceptable. I, it's disgusting to have to share a room with somebody you don't know from Adam. We've got set times for everything. I hate rules. I just, I like to do my own thing on holiday. 12 days is going to be an incredibly long time. No wonder people started going abroad, though. Let's be honest. Perhaps a drink will get our campers into the holiday spirit. Fun for all! Buster can't hear you, I said fun for all! We'll see you shortly. Soft drink, please. No one there. No, soft drink. Before the adults can get stuck into some warm beer and baby sham, there's the perennial holiday problem of what to do with their kids. 1960s holiday camps had their own solution. Camps like Butlins created a winning formula. By entertaining children, they offered parents a welcome break. In the evenings, chalet patrols gave parents the chance to drink and dance. And the fellas would stand at the bar with four or five pints on a tray saying, as long as the kids are enjoying themselves, that's the main thing. You go to the pub and there'd be a woman on a bike going up and down the chalet lines, listening outside the doors and windows to see if any kids were crying. And someone would say, Baby crying, Shally 35, B York. That's not us. Let's get down. What we would like at this particular moment in time is any of our children 14 years and under to come and join us down the front 
of the stage. If you'd like to come down here. For the under 14s, it's bedtime and it's only nine o'clock. And before you go, I think it's only nice and proper if you sing to all the grown ups. Try their best. Tomorrow night we'll make sure that you know all the ways. Good night, boys and girls. Good night. See you in the morning. Good night, everybody. Today, 14-year-olds go to bed whenever they want on holiday. Levi Peterson is mortified at the prospect of an early night. Early to bed. Early rise. Oh, I just think that was proper sad because how old do they think we are? About six. Sad having us embarrass us in front of everyone sat there singing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. It's not exactly like we're 11, we're 14. And one year older, we'd be sat in there with them till half past 10. And we had to sit there and be embarrassed to death. So, and we got to sing it for the whole 12 days. How gay is that? With the kids out of the way, the rest of the campers settle down to socialize. So put your hands up for beer. Ready, set, and go! Come on, everybody! <laughs> come on, everybody, come here, just make some noise, you're going to people. A little bit of dignity, man. Oh, dear. In 1960s holiday camps, silly games and a few drinks were real icebreakers. Fabulous team, one, give them a nice round of applause, everybody. But drinking in moderation is something these campers have clearly never heard of. The campers look like they could drink all night, but in 60s camps, most bars closed at 10.30. Okay. Shall I say that for you? Campers were expected to return to their chalets. But some of our campers are so tanked up, they can't even find their beds. <laughs> chalets were patrolled to ensure families got a good night's sleep. You've got to go to sleep, OK? you got your key? Yes. OK, sleep well. There's kids asleep. Keep it down, OK? But these lads are more used to causing mayhem on holiday rather than getting an early night. We like to have a drink, so we don't go home to about 3 o'clock. We drink, go back to our friend's house and we socialise. In Cavos, it was two weeks. We were doing what we wanted, when we wanted, and it, like, anything we wanted to do, really. Is just go swimming one minute and then go and drink in the next. It was great. Their holidays consist of is beer, sun and women. There's two rules on our lads' holiday. What happens stays there and you drink for two weeks. On an average night, we was drinking probably, say, about eight pints each, fish bowls, shots, bottles of champagne, and then going back to our hotel, fill a bath up with champagne, wine, peach snaps, everything, and then just all take a straw and drink out of it. There's always forfeit through who doesn't want to drink. Then we say we're getting your orange, and we're whacking Zambuca, tequila, everything in their drink, and they end up being more drunk than we are. On holiday, to get away from like your old people and your parents and your families, we want to be on our own, the lads, just lads. Have it! We're not in our 1960s mode. Maybe after our third night, we'll be sort of like in that sort of frame of mind where we could go to bed by like midnight or half eleven. But at the minute, we're no, we're all excited. We're all up for the crack. With such blatant disregard for the rules, Major Vernon Rees goes on the prowl. Now listen to me, smart ass. I, I haven't done anything wrong, I'm sorry. Listen, what I would really, really like you two to do is allow me to go to sleep. 
Right. I am stunningly bored with the behaviour of people like you. Well, I think it's crucial, particularly as this is night one, is that we need to make it absolutely clear to them, in spite of our sort of general bonhomious approach to it, that we're serious about the parameters of their behaviour. And when we say goodnight, we mean goodnight. As soon as the Major's back is turned, the boys are at it again. They don't know how to bloody behave themselves. What I want you to do is I want you to go to sleep and shut up and stay shut up until the morning and behave yourself so that the rest of us in this camp can enjoy ourselves, including you, you clod. I, I want I'm... you to go to sleep and I want you to go to sleep now. I'm agreeing you are behaving you. like a child. I am a twat. That's my problem. I'm I have no idea what a twat is. A, but I'm if a, you tell me that's what you are, then I'm perfectly prepared to accept it. This is my last visit. The next time I come here, it will be with the security staff and a taxi and you will go home. Stupid boy. Kerry gets physical. I must, I must improve my vast. There we go. And the tannoy you can't switch off. Every time that bing bong thing goes off, it's just driving me crazy. <laughs>